Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. So today we are going to do topic 63b of miscellaneous. Of miscellaneous. So first of all here we are going to discuss technologies for direct seeding of rice and transplanting of rice. So first of all we will discuss technologies for direct seeding of rice or what you can say is uh, methods of direct seeding of rice first of one is dry direct seeding dry direct seeding here the bed seed bed or what you can say surface is dry so first of can where you can use broadcasting here we need 60 to 80 kg of seeds <coughs> which is been broadcasted uniformly by hands and then the, the seeds are covered using covered using a spike tooth arrow spike tooth arrow secondly we can do drilling here we can drill using happy happy cedar it regards around 80 to 100 kg of seeds per hectare and what happens <coughs> fertilizer can be also applied at the same time the seed when drilling the seed <coughs> or planting the seed we can also apply the fertilizer at same time Moving to the next method that is dibbling or hill planting. Dibbling or hill planting. It is mainly performed on mountain slopes. Mountain slopes using a long wood or bamboo pole with a metal scoop. We use long, long rod or bamboo pole for bamboo pole with or with metal scoop for digging. And the, we drop the seeds in the dig and cover the seeds. So these were three methods for dry direct seeding. Now moving on to wet direct seeding. The second process of direct seeding wet direct seeding here the seed bed is wet first of all here we also do the same that is broadcasting it regards 80 to 100 kg of seeds 80 to 100 kg of seeds per hectare the seeds are used in recently drained or well puddled seed beds drained or recently drained or well Puddled seed beds. So you can see that here the uh, <coughs> seed bed is not dry, it is wet. Now, second process is drum seeding. It is used for fast planting. It also required 80 to 100 kg, 80 kg round seed per hectare in wet seed bed. So these were the technologies or methods for direct seeding of rice. Now moving on to transplanting of rice. Technologies or methods for transplanting transplanting of rice. So here the first method is manual transplanting. of two types first one is random transplanting here we do not use a definite distance or space it is uh, it doesn't require not require definite distance or space 
usually it takes 20 to 25 persons per hectare second one is straight row method straight row method here, they, here we have got uniform spacing in random there was no uniform spacing but here is uniform spacing around 20 to 20 centimeter you can also use closure spacing of 15 to 15 centimeter or 10 to 10 centimeter mainly use closure spacing when the weed control is inadequate so we don't want to keep so much space for weeds to grow so we use closure spacing instead of bigger spacing second is this was manual transplanting second is mechanical transplant it requires less time and less labor mainly a single person can transplant a, a single person can transplant in one hectare and also requires less, less seeds that is only 18 to 25 kg per hectare per 100 meter square of nursery and seedling usually gets ready for transplanting in 15 to 21 days it has two methods two row walk behind this suppose this is the mechanical machine so in two row walk behind it will uh, uh, transplant in two rows and the farmer or the labor has to walk behind uh, handling the machine and the second one is eight row ride mode it will have eight row five six seven eight and there will be chamber or a seat from where the farmer or the labor can ride the machine here will be a seat where the farmer or labor can ride the machine so this was about transplanting of technologies for transplanting and direct seeding of rice <coughs> now moving on to what is the scope and limitations of cultivation of sugarcane cultivation of sugarcane first we will discuss the scope what is the scope of cultivation of sugar okay. first of all we have got many varieties many varieties are available such as disease resistance pest resistance etc <coughs> we have more than 700 installed sugar industries more than 700 sugar industries hence we have a huge number of market available high sugar content variety available high sugar content variety is available we have got high research and development mainly in for example you can see in sugar breeding research institute sugar breeding research institute which is developed by icar <coughs> It can sugar can be also be used in uh, seed and chewing purposes. We often people choose to chew sugar cans. Around 11.9 percent of total sugar can is used at seed or chewing purposes. So this was the scope of cultivating sugar can. Now moving on to some of the limitations of cultivating sugar cans. Limitations. First of all, drought prone loss less productivity. It is drought prone. Hence, in drought areas, it is less productive. You can see this in southern states. Some of the southern states, in some years, the productivity was low due to less rainfall. There is incidence of pest and diseases such as root borer from Punjab. Root borer was seen in Punjab. There are many soil related and nutritional issues. Soil and nutritional issues. Low messy mechanization or low machine, low awareness to farmers. The low awareness about planting methods to farmers. How sugar can so be planting planted nicely and in good methods. So these are the limitations on cultivation of sugarcane. Now moving on to the scope and limitations of cultivation of sorghum. <coughs> cultivation of 
swargam first of all you can do is cope it can be grown in dry areas so it not require so much irrigation can be used an excellent bioenergy crop bioenergy crop is used nicely in many industries for various purposes can be used as forage and fodder crop <coughs> sweet sorghums can be grown which are highly nutritional and high market price look at the limitations you can see that there is grain deterioration in grain deterioration in kharif sorghum grain often deteriorates in kharif season the dial of farmer friendly public policy is that is low msp not proper policies to sorghum low rabi sorghum productivity often the sorghum productivity is low because farmers not tend to give more importance to sorghum relating to fertilizer irrigation etc etc that often leads to lower uh, production there is not to so much hybs present not such as not much seeds present of biotic resistance such as uh, pest resistant seed tree resistant seeds are not present so much so much quantity we are not able to exploit genetic material so these were some of the limitations of sorghum now moving on to next topic that is curing in curing in tobacco so curing is the process by which harvested tobacco leaf is made ready for market harvested tobacco leaf is red made ready for market tobacco is red made ready for market <coughs> mainly tobacco gets its marketable importance through curing and removal of moisture and due to curing and removal of moisture the quality of tobacco is often decided a good quality leaf uh, from a field can be made poor by improper curing if a, the quality of tobacco leaf is good at the field but we do improper curing curing then the quality of leaf will deteriorate it will not give us so much price in the market now what are the methods of curing first one is air cured air cured air cured here what happens to work is um, <laughs> hung in well ventilated barns so that air can pass barns are actually clean houses where tobacco is cured here the tobacco is hung in barns with good uh, ventilation so that air can help to cure that thing. it actually takes 4 to 8 weeks and the air cured tobacco and low in sugar and low in sugar and high in nicotine content um, such as cigar tobacco barley tobacco these are mainly air cured tobacco now second method is fire cured second is fire cured tobacco the types of cured tobacco cured tobacco what fire cured here what happens uh, <clears throat> here it takes 3 to 10 days as due to fire the heat is more what happens tobacco is hung in large barns where of hard woods uh, where fire of hard woods are kept in continuous and intermittent low smolder fire from hard woods are used here <clears throat> it is low in sugar but high in nicotine <clears throat> it is usually used for pipe chewing and this mop tobacco thirdly we have got 
फ्लू क्यूर्ड थर्डली वेव कॉट फ्लू कर्ड दीज ही आर द बांस है फ्लूज विच रन फ्रॉम एक्सटर्नली फायर्ड ब्लॉक फ्लूज विच आर रन फ्रॉम एक्सटर्नली फायर्ड ब्लॉक्स Externally fired <coughs> blocks or boxes. What you want to say? Boxes uh, heat curing the tobacco. Boxes here the heat used to cure the tobacco while exposing it to smoke and slowly raising temperature. Also here we expose the tobacco with smoke and slowly used to raise temperature over course of curing. It takes around one week. Here the tobacco is high in sugar and. medium to high in nicotine high in nicotine now fourth we have got sun cured here the it is cured in open sun dried under the sun it is high in sugar and low in nicotine in india used to produce white it is used to produce white snuffs Which are fine, dry, and unusually potent. Now, fifth uh, is fermentation. It is the second stage of curing in some tobacco. After curing in some tobacco, we do it. Second stage after curing in some tobacco. Here, tobacco freezed in casing solution contains sugar and flavoring. in casing solutions tobacco are used to keep in casing solutions which contain sugar and flavoring example you can see in in cavendish spirit tobacco etc so this was curing and tobacco hope you all understand it So this is all for today's session. For any queries, do comment. If you like it, please press the like button. Do share and subscribe. That's all for today. Have a nice day. Thank you.